How's it going YouTube? Bag here from Big Boy Beats back with another rough amateur production video. Uh, hopefully trying to get some people out there that are interested in music production to to go ahead take the plunge and have a go at doing it. So <laughs> this video is slightly different to what I anticipated it to be. Long story short I started this whole video at 11.03 p.m. UK time. Um, did the whole half an hour recording video going through building this track idea which was basically just a rough guide to how you can start a track anyway stopped the video pretty pleased with how it went a few mistakes in there as per usual with me went to play it back hadn't recorded any audio whatsoever so it's basically just an Ableton screen with a load of flashing lights on it so after sitting here for a couple of minutes with my head in my hands, fighting back the tears, I thought, you know what, let's just do another one. Let's just do a work in progress and show people where you're at with it. So, not as I anticipated it to be. Done a bit more work on it than what I wanted to, but I think the, the basic idea is there. So, title of this video really is uh, starting a track with very little time. The way I... I tend to produce and the way I tend to start tracks is I'll sit down in the studio at the end of a day's work uh, after I've taken my wife to work she works nights little girls in bed and I will sit down and I will just have a mess around in Ableton and I'll just see if I can get a track idea together some work and I'll carry on doing them and end up finishing the tracks others don't work and I'll just bin them get rid of them so the idea tonight really was to start a track and, and record how I'd started it. Um, worked okay, to be honest with you, I'm sort of feeling this track, but just you guys don't get to see the, the whole journey, unfortunately. So, things I'm going to be using for this track are literally one chord stab, a pad, uh, which is a preset from Massive, uh, some, some drum hits, and a vocal from a Kelly LaRock sample pack, which is available on Loop Masters, but I use Splice for mine. I'll talk about that as we go through. So, starting the video off, I've literally just got the kick drum, so I'm going to press play, and hopefully you'll hear it. Nothing major. All I've done with the kick is I've just rolled the bottom end off a little bit just so it gives the, the very, very low end of the frequency a bit of room. I suppose you'd call that next hit a, uh, I'd say you'd call it like a rim shot stroke snare. Quite garagey, this track is. Now you can probably hear from that is that's the sort of sound I'm going for. I'm going for like a garage beat with this one. Nothing major on the drums. Really, really simple programming. If I double click on the on the actual clip itself, not a very, very long drum beat. What I tend to do is I tend to start with like that, and then as time goes on, I will click this duplicate loop button, and then I'll start to move some of the drum hits around. Maybe put a couple of fills in at the end of the loop. But that's how my, my drums start. Not got a lot of processing on these drums to be honest with you. I've put an EQ on every single track. As you can see as I move through them. Just to get rid of the low end rumble. That I, I don't need on some of the drums. On the rim shot. And also on the, on the snare or clap. Whatever it sounds like to you. I've put a little bit of reverb on there. And with the hats, all I did with the hats, just to give them both some room, is I just pan them a little to the left and a little bit to the right, just to give them both some room in the spectrum. So there's the drums. Now the bass, you see here I've got three versions of, of the bass. I'm just going to stop this clip to stop it going any further got three versions are all exactly the same 
instrument. It's a simpler device with a chord stab in there. I've got low, mid and high. Obviously the low is a couple of octaves down. The mid is what I played it in at originally. And then the high is a couple of octaves up. I'm going to play the mid for you on its own just so you can get a feel for how that sounds. So hopefully you can see the program in there. Nice and simple. The riff just moves over five notes. It's eight bars long, I think you'd call it. Now let's introduce the high chord. And the low chord. I'm going to solo the low. With the low, there's not a lot there. It's just a tiny little rumble at the bottom end of the of the frequency, but I think it just fills the whole the whole group up, so to speak. And if I've got a similar sort of sound, or or say for argument's sake, this I've called it the bass group. I always tend to group the tracks. As you can see here, they're all in this bass group. Now with my basses, what I always do, without fail really, is I, I put them into an audio effect rack and I have two chains. I've got one chain which is doing the low end, the second chain which is doing the mid and the high end. The low end, I will always put on mono, just to make sure that the frequency is totally in mono. And then the, the mids and the highs, I will put a tiny bit of reverb on there just to give it a bit of room. So if we solo the lows, you can hear it's a very, very, very small amount. It's a very small sound. We'll solo the mids and highs. I'll put those together with the with the drums. Next thing I did is I went for some pads. I'm going to put the pads in on their own just so you can hear it now. Say I use the term pads, it's just one patch from Massive to be honest with you. I'm going to play it, see what you think. That's quite a lot of movement in that pad sound, which is what I was going for really. Um, garage sometimes can be a bit dark, a bit deep and mysterious, and a pad sound can really brighten the brighten the track up. Don't get me wrong, I don't count myself as a professional, but I grew up listening to garage, so I, I tend to know what I'm talking about when it comes to garage music. So, that's what those three sound like together. <laughs> Obviously, we can't just have a whole track full of full of that. 
So what I did is I found this vocal on, on Splice. Guys, if you've never used Splice, you should really get over to the website. I will try, if I remember, to put a link in the description to this video. Um, Splice, basically, you buy credits for it. So you subscribe. It's a monthly subscription. I think it's under £10 a month. I think it's about £7, I think. Um, but you get 100 credits for that £7, or under £10. You basically browse all the samples which they have, and to be honest with you, the libraries, it's amazing. They've got an extensive library of sounds, usually that you'll find on places like Loop Masters or Sounds to Sample. Um, but the, the beauty is you don't have to buy the entire sample pack. I used to find myself spending upwards of sort of like 20, 30, even 45 pounds, I think it's probably the most sam most expensive sample pack I've bought. And you'll find a handful of samples in there that you'll use and the rest of them will just sit there in your folder and gather digital dust, so to speak. With Splice, you go in, you pick which samples you want, you can actually make your own custom sample packs, download them all, and they all get put into a little folder. If you can see my sample library here, I've got a Splice folder. And these are all the samples which I've had from Splice. I've only been using it for about a month, to be honest. Um, but, guys, it's absolutely amazing. The samples are, are crazy. Looks like some of them have actually disappeared. It looks like I've made a boo-boo and deleted some of them, but, oh well, never mind. So, back to the vocal. I'm going to solo the vocal, but I've got two versions of it. I'm going to play version, well, the first version of it, first of all. See what you think. It's by Kelly LaRock. And I'll still be here tomorrow. I'll make my way. Yeah, I'll still be here tomorrow. I'm here today. And I'll still be here tomorrow. I'll make my way. Yeah, I still be here tomorrow. So that would be pretty boring if you played that all the way through. What I've also done is I've also got a. I don't know what you describe it as. It's very difficult to describe it without showing you. Um, but I've got Ableton Live's Push 2 device. And in simpler in that you can basically take a, an audio sample so this audio sample for argument's sake and you can cut it up into into slices and you can then use those slices and play them on your on the device so just for example I'm here, I'm here today tomorrow here be, I'm here today and I, I'm make be, I'm here so what I'm planning on doing with this track when I can spend a bit more time on it is is to go in and, and maybe play some of those sounds in at various points and, and make my own little little verse or chorus just using those or maybe play a stab sound and and put a I don't know an audio effect on it I'll tell you what let's just do it as an example now just so you can see I'm just going to turn the microphone off so you don't hear me smashing around in the background I'm here Today, today, I'm here. Today, 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 today. So that's it. Just with a bit of reverb on. I'm here. So you get the idea. Again, it doesn't sound amazing on its own, but try and imagine that when you're playing it in context with, I don't know, maybe just the drums on their own. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> let's just do it as an example. So. Tomorrow, be here tomorrow. Do, 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 do,
again without spending too much time on it you can sort of like get the gist of where I'm going with it if I do decide to continue with this track it may be something that I'll do won't do it all the way through the track because it'll just sound stupid and boring so instead of, of using these samples you can also do something quite interesting with the vocal itself now with this vocal I had to do a little bit of warping on it to just fit the way I I wanted it to to fit the track really so these little orange markers without going into too much detail you can set these at various points in the clip and you can manipulate the the actual audio you can move it to a specific point in the bar just basically make it fit your fit your track or fit what you're going for I'm here today so this is the vocal and, on its own. and what I'm going to do at the end of this is I'm going to introduce the the next version of it yeah I still be tomorrow I'm here today and I still be here tomorrow I'm making way yeah I still be here tomorrow I'm here today so all I've done with it really is I've taken exactly the same audio clip exactly the same track I've duplicated it but you'll see, look at the bottom left hand corner here. I've pitched it down by seven semitones. Now, a semitone is posh terminology, or not posh terminology, it's the correct terminology for, for keys basically. Just pitched it down by seven keys, seven notes on the keyboard. And it sounds quite nice. It sounds like you've got two people singing it at the same time. Sounds like you've got Kelly LaRock and maybe another fella that's working in the studio with her. But I think it just gives a really, really good effect. I'm here today. And I still be here tomorrow. So let's just play all of those together now and see what you think. So guys, there you have it. Um, only 20 minutes long. The last video I did where there was no audio it lasted about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. So this is, I suppose, a condensed version of it. Still pretty annoyed, to be honest, that I did that. But hey-ho, there you go. I didn't want to didn't want to let it put me off. Um, so yeah, 20, 20 minutes in, we've got a really, really rough idea of a track together. 
don't know whether I'm going to carry on with it. Maybe I'll look for some other vocals I can throw in around it. Maybe build a, a whole track idea from it. I see Garage making a bit of a comeback this year. There's a lot of people out there that are doing it. Um, Shift Key, I know he sort of like came back last year, but he's put another banging tune out at the minute. And I think Garage and Two Steps going to make a comeback. So fingers crossed, I'll be able to push my material out there and and maybe get recognised for it. So, um, guys. I'm sorry that I didn't do another video again before this one. In my previous video, I said I was going to try and get on and do one every night or every other night. But you know what? Life gets in the way sometimes. Work's been really busy. So uh, it's not my main job. Let's just carry on doing what I'm doing and hoping to hope to get a, a few videos out there every week or, or something like that. I suppose the defining factor is if I get quite a few views and, and likes and subscribers, I'll carry on doing them. I know I keep saying it guys I'm not professional this is a hobby um, but if I can help somebody else out that's just starting producing music or messing around on Ableton or or Logic or Cubase or Fruity Loops uh, and it gets them into making music like YouTube got me into making music then great um, you might not be musically trained I'm not musically trained at all um, but you can watch stacks of YouTube videos like this one uh, Point Blank Online is another great place Sonic Academy another great place Danny J Lewis with his music production tutorial channel um, they're really really good places to, to get going really and start making music just watching their videos just being inspired by what they do um, so guys thank you once again for your time I hope you've enjoyed this really really rough video of mine um, please like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel if you could and if you could put a comment below uh, I would really really appreciate it because I, I really do want to help people out and um, grow the channel and, and carry on doing things like this and, and hopefully go on to bigger and better things. So guys your feedback really would be appreciated. Um, take care, bye bye.